Isaiah 53, without a doubt, if not the, certainly one of the hallmark chapters in all the Bible, but certainly in the Old Testament. Isaiah was inspired to pin this down. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of of us all. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for the good singing. We thank you for the good prayer time. We do thank you for the good testimonies. And God, we're thankful you're a good God. We're thankful you hear and answer prayer. And God, we're thankful you're on the throne. You neither slumber nor sleep, that you are in control. And God, we are certainly thankful that you are not just a God or the God. You're our God. And we bless your holy name tonight. Now, Father, as we come, we pray that you would bless the reading of the Word of God. May we not only be hearers only, but become doers of the Word of God. Uh, and may you increase our faith, may you increase our joy, may you strengthen us with your mighty hand, and may you do great things even in our midst tonight. Lord, strengthen that one that is weak, lift up that one that is low, and certainly save that one which is lost. Uh, Father, be with those that are providentially hindered, that could not be here, that would love to be here tonight, and certainly be with our country, be with all that is going on, be with churches of like faith that have chosen to assemble tonight. God, just get glory to your glorious name. Help us use this unworthy vessel. We'll bless you for it, for it's in Jesus' wonderful name we ask these things. Amen. Amen. One writer said that of Isaiah chapter number 53, that it was so precious that it should have been written on parchments of purest gold uh, and pinned with diamonds. Uh, and I have to echo that this is truly a hallmark chapter, one that we can glean from uh, and gain uh, great uh, admiration for our Lord because of what is uh, transpiring in this chapter. Uh, can I say, uh, uh, I want you to notice, if you will, the person of Christ... Uh, in verse number two, you say, I thought Jesus didn't show up uh, till the New Testament. Oh, no, 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 friend. He uh, was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. He was in the beginning with God. He was God. Uh, 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 we can find him throughout the Old Testament. Uh, matter of fact, if you look for him, you'll find him on every page. Uh, but in this chapter, uh, we find that he is being illustrated uh, and they are showing, Isaiah's prophesying what will come uh, one day, Isaiah's looking to the cross, uh, we look back to the cross. Uh, but notice the person of Christ in verse number 2. Uh, For he who, the Lord uh, Jesus, uh, shall grow up before him as a tender plant uh, and as a root out of dry ground, uh, he hath no form nor comeliness. Uh, and when we shall see him, there's no beauty that we should desire him. Uh, can I say something about the Lord Jesus? Uh, he didn't show up uh, 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 and walk out of the manger proclaiming to be the king of glory. Uh, he grew up as a tender plant. Uh, he grew up uh, just as any other babe, uh, but yet he was without sin. Uh, but can I say there was no beauty, no comeliness, uh, nothing physical that would attract you to him. Uh, all those paintings uh, you see uh, uh, showing a lovely gentleman, uh, and they're calling that Jesus. Uh, that's not what he looked like. Uh, in most instances, uh, that was the artist's own own uh, uh, picture of himself uh, portrayed in that painting. Uh, but I want to tell you, there was nothing beautiful about Jesus to look upon him. Uh, but oh, uh, he is altogether lovely to me. Uh, uh, we find in verse number three, it goes on to describe him. Uh, it says this, he's despised. Uh, 
and rejected of men, uh, a man of sorrows. Uh, can I say uh, 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 the Lord Jesus constantly was praying uh, for folks, constantly interceding for folks, uh, constantly trying to save folks uh, and redeem folks. Uh, and even when he came and looked over Jerusalem, he wept uh, uh, because it re uh, Jerusalem rejected him. Uh, he's a man of sorrows, uh, acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Can I say, when Jesus was being beat, the Jews didn't come to his defense. When the chief priest hated him, those in their ranks just followed suit. They did not come and say, oh no, he's the one that fed the 5,000. Oh no, he's the one that raised the dead. Oh no, he's the one that touched blind eyes. No one came to his defense. And it said, it's, they hid, as it were, their faces from him. Can I say, when they were beating him in the hall of praetorium, they had to put a blindfold on him. They couldn't even look upon his eyes because those eyes were speaking how much he loved them. We find, if you will, it goes on to say in verse number 5, I'm talking about the person of Christ. It says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. Mm -mm. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we're here. We missed verse 4. Surely he hath borne our griefs. He carried our sorrows, and yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. We see the person of Christ. Then we see the propitiation of Christ. In verse 5, he talks about uh, uh, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. He was bruised from our iniquities. Uh, and it says, and with his stripes were healed. Verse 6, uh, all we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned every one into his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Uh, uh, the Bible says, he that knew no sin uh, became sin, uh, that we might be made that known as the righteousness of God. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. But it goes on to say in verse 6, Always like sheep have gone astray. The Lord hath laid on him in the iniquity of his all. Verse 7, he was oppressed uh, and was afflicted, uh, yet he opened not his mouth. He's brought as a lamb to the slaughter, uh, and as a sheep before shears is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. Uh, he was taken from prison and from judgment, uh, and who shall declare his generation? Uh, for he was cut off from the land of the living, uh, for the transgression of my people was he stricken, uh, and he made his grave with the wicked uh, and with the rich in his death because he had done no violence neither was any deceit in his mouth uh, can I say he became our propitiation our mercy seat our sacrifice uh, he died was buried made his grave with the rich he was buried in Joseph of Arimathea's uh, borrowed tomb we see my dear friends his propitiation what he did for you and I brother Brian he took your sins upon him Brother James, he took your sins upon him. Huh? Brother Phil, he took your sins upon him. And everybody else that ever has been or ever will be, he paid their sin debt. We see the person of Christ. We see the propitiation of Christ. But notice the pleasing Christ. Look at verse 10. Yet it pleased the Lord or the Father to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Can I say what Jesus did please the Father? And he came seeking to do the will of the Father. We see the pleasing Christ. Everything he did complimented the Father. And then I want you to notice the portion of Christ. Look at verse 12. Therefore, what? Therefore, because of what he done and because of who he pleased. Therefore, will I divide him a portion with the great. And he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors. And he bare the sin of many, and he made intercession for the transgressions. Notice the portion for Christ. We see his reigning. He says, therefore, well, I divide him a portion with the great. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He is Lord of lords and King of kings, and all powers and principalities have been put under his feet. Can I say we see his rendering? Look in verse 12. And he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death. Can I say all judgment's been committed unto him? He is the one who is going to hand out uh, all the trinkets in glory, all the rewards for those that overcame by the blood of the Lamb. Uh, and then we find, my dear friends, the, his restoring. Look what it says. We find that he was numbered with the transgressors and bare the sin of many, and here it is, and made intercession for the transgressors. I'm glad there's one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. And I'm glad he is all about restoring people to a right relationship with the Father. That's why he came. Adam and Eve sinned, and that relationship was broken. And the second Adam came, Jesus Christ, to establish or reestablish a relationship with the Father. And I thank God for that. Well, I looked at all this. There's so much preaching in this chapter. There's so much we could look at. But I want to look in verse number 1. The Bible says this. Who hath believed our report? Now we know... Romans chapter 10, So then faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And you can tell a good story, and that doesn't mean people are going to believe you or not. And you can tell them the truth, that doesn't mean they're going to believe you. But Isaiah is saying, I'm telling the truth. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? And with God's help, I want to preach for a few minutes tonight on the arm of the Lord the arm of the Lord. Now, obviously, had he not came, we would not know about the arm of the Lord. Had he not went to Calvary, and, and uh, we'd never known about the arm of the Lord. Had he not resurrected, we'd never known about the arm of the Lord. Uh, had he not saved us, uh, we'd never known about the arm of the Lord. Thank God for the arm uh, of the Lord. Can I say this? First of all, it's a mighty arm. His arm is a mighty arm. Uh, the Bible says in Psalms 89, 13, Thou hast a mighty arm. Uh, strong is thy hand, uh, and high is thy right hand. Uh, Deuteronomy 3, 24 says, O Lord God, uh, thou hast begun to show thy servant thy greatness uh, and thy mighty hand. Uh, for what God is there in heaven uh, or in the earth uh, that can do according to thy works uh, and according to thy might? Uh, can I say uh, nothing is too hard for our God. Uh, he has a mighty arm. Uh, hey, uh, he's the one that holds the entire universe uh, in existence uh, and he doesn't even break a sweat. Uh, hey, uh, there is nothing too heavy for him. Uh, there is nothing too powerful for him. Uh, his arm is a mighty arm. Uh, no matter what you're facing, uh, no matter what you're going through, uh, it's not too hard for God. Uh, he upholds us with his right hand. Uh, I've got good news. Uh, no man can pluck me out of his hand uh, because he's the mightiest of the mighty. Uh, there's never an even challenge. Uh, our God, uh, he has a mighty arm. Uh, friend, no matter what you're going through, uh, no matter what you're facing, uh, no matter what obstacles lie ahead, uh, they're not too big or too hard for our God. Uh, he is a mighty God. Uh, the Bible says the Lord God Almighty, uh, omnipotent, uh, reigneth. Uh, he is is almighty tonight uh, and nothing is too difficult for him uh, can I say it's a mighty arm but can I say it is a manifested arm look again at verse number one who had believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed can I say it is a manifested arm can I say Jesus' arms are wide open to everybody but not everybody get to see uh, his mighty arm. It is a manifested arm. Uh, uh, can I help you with something? Uh, it's available to all. But only those that put their faith and trust in him will see his mighty arm. Uh, it is revealed unto them. Uh, 
Hey, the just shall live by faith, uh, and it's revealed faith to faith. Uh, but I want to tell you something. Uh, his arm is manifested. Uh, I sat in a church house for the first ten and a half years of my life. Uh, heard the greatest preacher that's ever preached, uh, ever wore shoe leather, preached every Sunday, uh, uh, every Wednesday, uh, every Saturday night. Uh, and yeah, he want to tell you something. Uh, it didn't mean anything to me. Uh, it didn't mount to a hill of beans. Uh, it wasn't anything. Uh, until I put my faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and the Lord revealed himself to me. Uh, he revealed how mighty his arm is. Uh, hey, and for 46 years uh, I've been hanging on and trusting in uh, uh, the wonderful, mighty, everlasting arms of Jesus. Uh, and friends, what a blessing when he manifests himself to you. You know what? Some of your loved ones can't understand why you're here tonight. Hmm. It's never been revealed to them. Mm. They're trusting in a head knowledge. They're trusting in a fleshly knowledge. They're trusting in their intellect. They're trusting in their reasoning. They're trusting in the, uh, uh, the words of very educated people. Uh, but I'm trusting in the Lord. It says, To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? It is a manifested arm. John said this in John 2, 11. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glories uh, and his disciples believed on him. First uh, John 3, 5. Uh, and ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins and in him is no sin. Uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, until you believe in him, until you're around him, until you see him, uh, it'll never be manifested to you. Hmm? You know what worries me? How we can congregate week in and week out, and there's some folks they blow in, blow out, come sometimes, don't come sometimes. Here, the same preaching, some of us here, and it never impacts them. That scares me to death. And it's one thing if her talking about her friend who's never sat in a Baptist church under the preaching we've sat in. I don't expect her to understand. But folks that sit under the preaching of the Word of God week in and week out and it never impact them, hmm, something wrong. I want to tell you something. You can watch the news and listen to weatherman and know that they're going to miss it most of the time, but it still impacts you. You still take an umbrella to work. Well, why can you sit in a church where the Word of God's being preached and it never impacts you? Everybody in here right now can go in your mind back to a teacher you had back in grade school. And you're old like me. You can't even remember last week, but I can remember some of the teachers I had. I had a teacher named Miss Stockman, first grade teacher. Uh, Miss Stockman, she was a very, very classy lady. She kind of reminded me a little bit of Jackie O. Uh, but Miss Stockman, she really took an interest in me because I was left-handed. She was left-handed. Back then, they used to hit your hand with a ruler and try to make you write right-handed. And she didn't teach me how to print. She taught me how to write because she was ahead. I remember that because she impacted me. But how can people sit in the house of God and it never impact them? Mm. Oh. It is a manifested arm. There are some people come out to church for the social reasons. They just want to be a part of something. There are some people come out because they was told them, you have to go to church. You have to earn your way to heaven. I got good news for you. You're never going to earn your way to heaven. Mm. That's why I've just trusted in the Lord. He done paid the way. There are some people that come out uh, uh, because they just think that's their responsibility. But thank God for that crowd that comes out to worship. Hmm? But can I say it is a manifested arm. And you keep that in mind when you're talking to folks because not everybody has sat where you've sat. Not everybody has seen what you've seen. Not everybody has experienced what you have experienced. They're not going to get it. Hmm? Uh, did you ever watch some of them magicians and try and figure out how they do all that? Well, you're not going to get it because they have well disguised it. But if they ever revealed their secret, you'd see it every time. Hmm. Well, I, I'm, I'm here to tell you there's just some folks haven't seen it. Hmm. Just some folks don't understand. Hmm. 
That's why I don't expect everybody to, to, to hang on what I've seen. I've been walking with the Lord for 46 years. He has proven and shown himself to me afresh and anew many, many, many times over. He has done things for me. And there have been times I've revealed something. I can't reveal everything, scare some of you half to death. But there have been times I've revealed some things where I've been and God showed up. Uh, and it's, caused, uh, 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 it's cultivated something in some of your hearts saying, Preacher, I want to experience that. Uh, I want to see God that real. Uh, what a blessing. But that crowd, there's some that's just, it never, it's like bouncing a rubber ball off a brick wall. Never, never does ever click with them to whom read again who hath believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed when you believe it will be revealed he's asking the question who amongst you has he revealed his arm mm -mm. I want to tell you something this crowd here tonight I have no doubt God's done something for you why would you be here tonight and let me just say this. I want to thank those of you who have contacted me and been an encouragement to your preacher because you don't know the scrutiny I've been under. But I appreciate those that have reached out and said, Preacher, thank you for having church. Preacher, thank you uh, 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 for preaching the Word of God. I needed that preacher. Thank you, preacher. Boy, it's helped this preacher. And I'm glad you're getting help from God. Can I say it's a mighty arm? It's a manifested arm. But never lose sight of the fact it was a mutilated arm. Look up in chapter 52. Look at verse 14. This verse, the first time I read it, it haunted me, and I've never gotten over it. It says, As many were astonished or astonished at thee, his visage or his appearance was so marred more than any man and his form more than the sons of men. Can I say when they beat Jesus before they crucified him, they beat him so severely that he didn't even resemble a human being. Those pictures and paintings you've seen with just a little blood trickling from his hand and his feet and his brow and his side, that's not what he looked like. Isaiah said... His visage was so marred much more than any man. Said that he was beaten so severely. Now listen, under Jewish law, they would beat a man 39 stripes. They thought 40 was inhumane. So they'd stop at 39 stripes. Can I say the first 10 or 12 would rip the skin off? The next 15 or so would rip the muscles off, and the rest would just rip whatever meat was left off. The psalmist said in Psalms 22, uh, uh, prophesying what Jesus would say on the cross, he said, My bones stare at me. They beat the very flesh off of our Savior. They beat those men with a cat of nine tails, which was a whip with many leather straps coming off of it. And on the end of those straps, they put bone fragments or broken pottery fragments. Uh, and when they'd wrap that around a man, they would pull it, uh, and that, uh, those fragments of bone and pottery would rip anything that it would attach to. But I've said the Jews beat with 39 straps. Jesus wasn't whipped by Jews. He was beat in the hall of praetorium by Roman centurions. Those Roman centurions were trained on inflicting punishment on people. And when they beat a man, they beat a man uh, in order to set forth an example so no one else would defy the Romans. Uh, and they were known, Brother Aaron, to beat a man with as many as a hundred stripes. He was beaten beyond recognition. It was a mutilated arm. The psalmist said in Psalms 22, 16, For dogs have compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me, they pierced my hands and my feet. It was a mutilated arm. Oh, we, we tout that heaven was free. The plan of salvation was free. It didn't cost us anything to go to heaven. It doesn't, because you can't earn your way in but it cost Jesus Christ everything. Hmm. 
they stripped the darling son of God. He was suspended between heaven and earth, looking like a piece of hamburger meat, and they spit upon him because, Brother Ray, he was guilty of loving you. He was guilty of loving me. And governors say we can't come to church. Hmm? I read Hebrews, 13, uh, Hebrews 11. And it gets down there and it talks about those ones that shut the mouths of lion Daniels and those that withstood uh, 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 the heat, uh, you know, the three Hebrews. It talks about that great crowd. And then it gets down to others. Those that were sown asunder, cut in half. Those that were stoned, those that were beaten and scourged and all that crap. And I wonder, Brother Tommy, when that crowd looks down, because Hebrews 12 says we're compassed about with a great cloud of witnesses. Uh, I wonder when that crowd looks at this generation. Those that were sown and cut in half for their faith. And they look at us and they say, well, a governor said you might get fined if you go to church. Hmm. Where's our faith? See, the ones that the arm of the Lord's been revealed to, they'll withstand because they see what he withstood. A crowd that is easily knocked out never was grounded in the first place. Go back and read the parable of the sower, that ones that sprouted up quick but it had no root of earth. There's a lot of that going on today. Can I say, it was a mutilated arm. Oh, it was a mighty arm. Yes, and it was a manifested arm. It was a mutilated arm, but thank God it's a merciful arm. The psalmist said in Psalms 136, 12, with a strong hand and with a stretched out arm, for his mercy endureth forever. And Jesus Christ, he stretched forth his hands to be nailed to a cross that one day he could stretch forth his hand to you and I through an act of mercy that we could be saved by the grace of God. He did that for us because he knew we could not merit God's favor. Uh, he knew we could never earn enough wages. Uh, he knew we could never do enough good works because uh, he knew there would never be anything that could atone for our sins except his precious blood. Uh, and he went to Calvary uh, and he shed his blood uh, so he could reach forth his hand in mercy uh, and offer us salvation, uh, offer us the pardon of God uh, so he could take the handwriting of ordinances that were given us, uh, nailed him to his cross uh, so he could reach to us and say whosoever will uh, let him come uh, and made a way we could be saved uh, it's a merciful arm thank God for mercy thank God we don't get what we deserve thank God he made a way he bridged the gap from heaven to earth through mercy and grace uh, it's a merciful arm. Can I say this? It's a miraculous arm. Look up in chapter 52 again, another one of my favorite verses. Preach on this about 10 years ago. Verse number 10 of Isaiah 52 says, The Lord hath made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Notice it said he bared his holy arm. Now, I'm not going to do it because I've got cufflinks in. Well, why not? Y'all came out, you get to see a show. Anytime you roll your sleeves up, that means you're fixing to do a work. Notice it doesn't talk about God bearing his arm for this. Huh? He's clothed in glory, yep. he's clothed in holy, holiness. But it says he bared his holy arm. He rolled his shirt sleeves up. Because he knew it was going to take a little extra to get you in. Hmm? Amen, he said, I'm going to go to work. I'm going to start putting people in his life. Oh, I'm going to let him hang around them Cox boys, and I'm going to start putting people in his life. And I'm going to start doing the work. And one day I'm going to hook him up with his North Carolina flower. And she's going to take him to church, and I'm yeah. going to get him. That's I'm right. going to get him. Huh? He did a work. Had to do work. Huh? Had to do work. Had to do work on you. 
Uh, uh, he rolled up his arms. Uh, Brother Donald, uh, he knew you'd be steeped in religion, uh, but he also knew you needed a Savior. Uh, and he bared his mighty arm. I'm talking about it was a miraculous arm. Uh, hey, listen to me tonight. Uh, hey, I don't know about you, but I still think it's a miracle that folks get born again. Uh, I mean, everything is against us. Uh, we were sinners by birth, uh, sinners by practice, uh, sinners by nature. Uh, but a holy God loved us, uh, and he went to work, uh, and he put some hands handfuls of purpose in our way he put people in our way that knew God and he did a miraculous thing that night when I bowed I went down a sinner but I came up a saint of God what a miracle only God can take a sinner and turn him into a saint in one swift motion by forgiving him and pardoning his sin it's a miraculous arm the psalmist said in Psalms 40, I waited patiently for the Lord, uh, and he climbed unto me and heard my cry. Uh, he brought me up also out of a horrible pit, uh, out of the miry clay, and set my feet on a rock, uh, and established my goings. Uh, he put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Uh, many shall see it in fear and shall trust in the Lord. Uh, oh, that horrible pit of sin you was in took a miraculous arm to reach down in there and get you out. And what did he do? He put you on the rock. Yeah. Hallelujah! The rock of ages cleft for me. It's a miraculous arm. And can I say this lastly? I'm talking about the arm of the Lord. It's a majestic arm. Oh, 1 Chronicles 29, 11. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in heaven and in the earth is thine thine is the kingdom O Lord and thou art exalted as head above all mm, he is the Lord there is none else all majesty, majesty all honor all glory all praise goes to him and one day every knee shall bow Every tongue shall buy, uh, uh, confess that he is Lord of lords and King of kings. Majesty, majesty, all belongs to him. Every, every king, dominion, high official will cast down their glory at his feet because he is the King of glory. My dear friends, it's a majestic arm. And to think that that arm reaches out his hand and tells us to walk with him and talk with him. An old songwriter, hand in hand with Jesus, we can just walk with him every day, cling to his majestic, everlasting arm. There's another passage I didn't look it up, but you can only fall to his arms. You can never fall beneath his arm because he has saved you and he bears us up with his mighty arms. And oh, what a savior is he. I wonder tonight, when was the last time you just truly trusted in him? When was the last time he really just was so real in your life? The arm of the Lord had been revealed to you that nothing was going to deter you from living for him. Can I say, I told my wife, I've been shocked these days by preachers who, who are all tore up about everything that's going on. And I'm thinking, hello, you've been preaching for years. Things aren't going to get better. They're going to get worse. Has God changed? Hmm. Folks say they believe that God can save them, take them to heaven, but they can't, they can't just believe that God will take care of them. I said the other day, we're all going to die of something. Hmm? Unless the rapture takes place. Something's going to get your number. You better be anchored into God long before you ever get that. And my wife said today, so many are missing out on the blessings of God. Hmm? Hmm? You mind if I share something I heard about you? I'm going to anyway. 
I just heard this. He didn't tell me this. I got it secondhand knowledge. He told my wife this. Remember a few weeks ago he was he requested prayer. We prayed for him about a job opportunity. And we prayed that night. Lord's will be done. Well then that job came open and it really wasn't what he wanted. And he didn't get it. But at the same time another job came open, which is exactly the one that he would have loved to have. And guess what? He got it. More money. I think better hours, better everything. Off on the weekend, never had to work Christmas no more. You had to work Christmas every year since you know Christmas began. I mean, and here you are. God just answered your prayer. Can I give you the Paul Harvey the rest of the story? You know why he didn't get the first job, but he got the job that the desire of his heart? Because he's faithful. Huh? Ever since he's got saved, he's been faithful. I mean, he can't get enough of God. I remember when he first got saved. He didn't understand all that tithing thing, but he knew he just had to do it. He's been faithful. And God's I just blessed him because he's been faithful. There's a lot of folks saying, why is this happening to me? And why is this going on? Like, hey, I got some good news. The secret in God's economy is faithfulness. Uh, if you put your faith in Him uh, and you just trust Him, uh, hang around, neighbor, see how good God is. Uh, hey, uh, I can tell you I have no sad story to tell. Uh, God's been good to me. Uh, I haven't always been what I should be, uh, but He's always been more than enough for me. Uh, he's a good God. Uh, you can trust his mighty arm tonight uh, hey just hang out with him uh, and watch and see the blessings flow your way God doesn't bless us because he's just picking and choosing his only condition for blessing us is that he loves us but let me just give you this analogy you got one child that's obedient and loves you and does everything you say, and then you got another child that's meaner than a snake, and you got to practically beat them to get them to do anything. Which one do you think you're going to give the extra ice cream cone to? You love them the same, and you give the same set of rules to both of them. But the one that uh, just buys in and does what they're supposed to do, they always get a little more uh, ice cream on the plate. Are you listening? They always get a little bit extra. And they don't even have to get it out of their mouth. Uh, uh, can I? Yep, you can. And then the other one, how come they get to do everything? Because they're faithful. Mm. Well, don't you think God's the same way? He loves us all the same. He's given us all the same instructions. But those that just do what God says uh, and just love Him back and just put Him first and uh, just strive to please Him uh, and that crowd that says, uh, well, I'm saved, but they just uh, uh, do it their way. Who do you think God's going to bless? Amen. The Bible says God's not mocked. Whatsoever man uh, uh, soweth, that shall he also reap. Mm. I'm just trying to help you tonight. His mighty arm is well able to take care of you and me. And if his arm can't take care of us, we all in a mess of trouble. Coronavirus be the least of our worries if God can't take care of us. Huh? I just believe God's big enough to take care of us. And I believe that throughout the Word of God we can find where he's always taking care of his people. David said he never seen the righteous forsaken nor seed begging bread. I may not be much, but I want to, by the, by the grace of God, I want to be as righteous as I can be because God has never failed me. Yeah, right. When's the last time you just, really just, laid it all on the arm of the Lord? Just let Him be your God. I mean, more than just your Savior, even more than just your Lord. Just trust Him with all of it. Just let Him be your God. And just see if He isn't able to sustain you. I'm sure he will. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, get a song of invitation. Brother Tony had worked in eight or nine years, but he'd be the first one to tell you God's every need supplied. Brother Thad's been out of work a year and a half. He'll tell you every need supplied. I can go on and on and on. Oh, what a great God we serve. Yeah. What a great God we serve. Be a great day in your life.
when he becomes your great God. Say, I'm saved, preacher, wonderful. Why don't you give it all to him and see how great he really is. Folks are coming and picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for being faithful and true. Thank you for being our God. Thank you, Lord, whether on the mountaintop or in the valley, whether smooth sailing or stormy waters, you're still God. Lord, sometimes you calm the waters and sometimes you just calm us. But God, thank you for your mighty arm. Now, Father, have your way in this invitation. Maybe some here tonight need their faith increased. Maybe some here tonight just need a little extra touch. Maybe some just need a little pat to be reminded you're still there. Maybe some tonight just needs a little pat to say you're doing well. Maybe some tonight needs something else. And certainly, God, for somebody here tonight unsaved, I pray they'd come give their heart and life to Jesus. Whatever the need is, Father, speak to hearts. Get glory to your name. We'll thank you for it. And again, thank you, Lord, for your mighty arms. Thank you for being our God. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.